<laughs> so good afternoon, everyone from Honolulu, Hawaii. Good morning in South Asia and good evening in New Zealand. On behalf of the Center for Southeast Asian Studies at the University of Hawaii, uh, we would like to welcome you to the last panel of our Spring 2024 webinar. My name is Pindarita Marosuri. I'm an MA student in political science here at the University of Hawaii. I'm honored to be to be a moderator for the panel. Today we have a distinguished guest from Cambodia with us. Um, I would like to introduce you to Renovo Fu Sophia, Renovo Hakyampan, and Renovo Cheviso. So first of all, um, I would like to I would like to introduce the panel to you. Renovo Ku Sophia is a professor at the Panasatra University in Cambodia. He received a PhD in leadership from Panasatra University. And he also was a visiting scholar at Troy University in Alabama in 2010. With um, his training in psychology, he has developed an online platform through social network to teach Cambodian people about life challenges in life and how to overcome them. So in his YouTube channel, he has almost 1 million subscribers today, right? 1 million almost. And for the our second panelist, we have um, Venerable Pak Siampan. He's a uh, executive director of Buddhism for Education of Cambodia or San Sandbar BBC. It is a nonprofit organization based in Batabong. Um, he's a new generation of Mokdok. I don't know if you heard of Mokdok. He's very influential. He's very influential with TikTok. So he has more than 600, 600 followers. So he had actually posed Khmer language classroom lesson in the whiteboard. Right? I saw you on, on your video. But over time, he developed a style combining with his um, center humor. And that's why, that's how he gained a lot of followers in his TikTok channel. <laughs> <laughs> and we have last but not least, panelist, Venerable Terry So. He was born in Kampong Dam in Cambodia. He has currently resided in Wat Kamen, Hawaii, in the Big Island. Oh, Bodaram in the Big Island since 2018. Around, around yeah. in USA in 2018. <clears throat> He's the founder of Damita Academy International, which provides Buddhism classes, mediation counseling, mental health and literature, and youth training. He's also an author of Dhamma Terminology, so which is, it was published in 2020, which is uh, an explanation and definition of various religious Buddhist teachings and scripture and practices. Okay, so we are really honored to have them here. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> so um, let's go to the fundamental concept first. What are the fundamental, fundamental teachings in Buddhism? What does Buddhism teach? Maybe we'll start with Venerable Lusophia. So, thank you very much everyone for coming. I'm happy to be here. Um, the fundamental teaching of the Buddha can be summarized into three points. First one is not uh, not to do any bad deeds. Second one is to cultivate good deeds. And the third one is to purify one's mind. So, those are the summary of the teaching of the Buddha for 45 years. Um, and if we, we could summarize to one point only uh, before the Buddha passing away, go to Nibbana, mm -hmm. the advice us. To be mindful. So that is the whole summary. The teaching of the Buddha is uh, to be mindful in uh, doing the. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so actually there are some fundamental systems uh, that are by the people and many retail. Everybody heard about the phone, but it's one of the central teachings of the Buddha that relate with way of life, especially he talks the you know the first step about first thing is about the suffering in life, and then he talks about the number two stuff, the cause of suffering, and then the third one is the cessation of suffering, and the last one, the way leading to the cessation of suffering. And the last part is very important because it contains the technique how to liberate ourselves from the round of suffering. And that is the noble eightfold path that consists of right understanding, right thinking, right action, right speech, right effort, right livelihood, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So to sum up this noble eightfold path, we can sum up in three types. So the first one is type into morality. The second one is into wisdom. The third one is into uh, meditation. So these are the three categories that sum up from the noble eight factors. And this is actually the way that leads to liberate being from the realm of Sankara the round of life and death. So in Buddhism, we, we believe that um, the only way to end completely suffering in this life is to attain Nibbana or Nirvana, which is the ultimate goal of Buddhism. So every Buddhist try the best to practice uh, those principles, uh, hoping that or, uh, they can achieve this ultimate goal of liberating themselves from the round of suffering. If it's still coming back to life, so we still have to suffer again and again and and like this. So that's my yeah, very hard. For me, uh, I think all of you can understand Buddhism is a way of life. And I think uh, the fundamental teaching is uh, to experience the unhappiness. Happiness in the state of life and uh, happiness that we all gain after life. And so, I think only Buddhism that mentioned for the liberation. Faith has some mentioned that the most important thing is how to become a person. And that's one thing to have distance and to show. Faith from the and then the world to be 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 to to in India, can you give us some also it seems like it seems like a concrete or abstract concept, right? Mm -hmm. you, you cannot do one, you cannot do two, but in India it is like there's different concepts. How how do you teach them? How how can individuals apply those teachings to be able to So for example, in the type of morality, mm -hmm. one has to practice like code of conduct in order to live a happy life and also to refrain from harming others. So basically everybody knows that in the teaching we have the uh, five basic moral uh, virtues that we have to observe and stay to the five things that 
study life and then we study from taking it up again. So these are the basic principles, the fundamental code of conduct with a healthy life. And so it's you know it's it's one factor out of the global age factor that we can practice on a, on a daily basis. So this is one example of the <laughs> Yesterday I went to the beach and I saw the birds running around. They didn't get a, a state of us as human. So you really the precept of the Buddha. Not to harm a living being, and as a, as a result, they are not afraid of us. But in some places, if you you kill them, you harm them, they are afraid of you, and they run away if you get to look at them. And I think that is the result of practice morality, not harm. And uh, if some neighbor are, are, are not so good, are not so nice, they Fear the disturbing, you cannot live peacefully. And then I think that it's very practical. You do good, you receive good in a good endowed, good environment, good people, and you can uh, live peacefully. Yeah, what about mindfulness? You mentioned earlier about mindfulness. How, how do one practice mindfulness? Can you elaborate? What's the step that we need to go through? To practice mindfulness, what does it mean? What does mindfulness mean? Or what's the result of mindfulness? I, I think raise a, a consequence of not being mindful. <laughs> the first, uh, some sometimes uh, you forget a lot. You forget the key. You you forget everything when you get out the, the house. Oh, I think I'm not mindful. I know. So. Because of having uh, not practiced mindfulness, you, you didn't be aware of what you were doing, so you forget a lot. Mm -hmm. You lose a lot of memory. So by practicing mindfulness, simply means you're aware of what you are doing, what you are doing. So when I'm sitting, I'm aware I'm sitting, I'm talking, I'm aware I'm talking, you go into the restroom, I'm aware I'm Going to the restroom, I am inside the restroom. I am aware. I'm inside the restroom. I'm reading. I'm aware. I'm reading. I'm eating. I'm drinking, or even dripping in. Dripping out. Dripping in. That is is a every activity you can include mindfulness into it, and the the benefit of mindfulness is. I mean, you stay in the present moment. You don't lose yourself. Uh, and it's the practice of improving not the quality of your mind, but also the quality of your life. I think that very well is supposed to be the day at all. Um, you can only mindfulness practice with uh, very important followers, because the way that you can develop wisdom as long as we are mindful in how we activate, so how we can develop wisdom that uh, we can analyze what is wrong and what is right. So when we realize it, that is our wisdom. So, So we can practice young people, not only uh, some some Buddhist with Sometimes we did that only we go to some places and see and the meditation process that 
I'm also um, wondering about the concept of peace. What, so what does the concept of peace entail in the framework of the Can you because you mentioned that you read about liberation, mindfulness, and what about peace? Like is it inner peace, in little peace, collective peace? What how what does peace entail in the um, from the Buddha point of view, they refer to individual peace that is the starting point. So you cannot make yourself a peace. How can there be peace outside you? How can you make peace between the family, the community, and the society? So peace is, is mental, it's, it's in the mind. So one must be able to take from between the inside, we cannot <laughs> take it outside because um it that the Buddha refers to is not it's not about the ball and the world, but actually the world is not the mind. So any in in our mind, another day, we have a take it every body. We always have negativity to affected by all kinds of, you know, negativity. So whenever there is negativity, impurities of the mind, environment of the mind, then there will be no peace at all. Because every time we feel frustration, every time we feel angry, you know, anger, all kinds of uh, negativities are there. So that's why uh, there are no peace. So to me, uh, what I can say about the Buddha on the moon, uh, peace comes from the beginning. So it's that part. Yeah. 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 The base for children. <laughs> when you peace start with a smile. <laughs> uh, so, um, sometimes the, the appearance is uh, outside is okay, it's peaceful, but inside is not peaceful. There's war inside you. And, and the, the war inside uh, generates the war outside um, through your word or your action. So the basic concept of peace in Buddhism is the, the mind first. And if your mind is at peace, it influences the body at peace, means you work for peace. And your your word also at peace too. I I I saw a lot of violence on social media. They they cursing one another, yelling one another, and I thought that is also a war out there, and it started the war here. So that's why. We as individuals is responsible for building peace for ourselves and also influence others to be a, their own peace too. And collectively, we are at peace. It's really hard. That's our job. <laughs> so when you talk about peace and war earlier, and that brings my next question about the role of Buddhism in during the war, during the war time. So, where that what's the role of Buddhism? Where that can be still practice during the war time, during the pandemic? There's no war Buddhism during 
Maybe. Mm -hmm. So we don't have road there. Labor. You're yeah. Only yeah. 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 after that. So um, with that, uh, what's, what do you think the role of Buddhism in reconstructing, in reconstructing the whole country in Cambodia or the role of Buddhism in reconciliation after the war? Of reconciliation uh, led by you and uh, they also include monk in to the discussion mm -hmm. of all parties and every party usually pay respect to the monks mm -hmm. somehow uh, sy symbolically these are paid there so the uh, during the discussion the the monk just maybe give a short talk or a lesson and and, and it start uh, to to end the war but but not just for only monks who, who play a role in that but everyone are willing to give peace for Cambodia mm -hmm. including all party in Cambodia the UN and other mm -hmm. uh, uh, signature country of Paris agreement but but I just want to include that Money is a symbolic of peace in the process of being in Cambodia. Okay. So, 
So that I would like to follow up on education. So how does this would be integrated into the education program? How the thing um what about Peggy, you have a education program at Freddy. So can you share with us a little about that? What, what are you intending to do? What are you trying to to promote? What, what has been the outcome of it? Yeah. We um let's talk, let's continue from after the what happened in no like even after the post operating. Korean people are really thirsty for temple really because there, there was no religion in three months. Three years, like three years and over, yeah, over three years that our people mm -hmm. have no religion because Buddhism has been a spiritual path, has been very important role in their life. The life of the Buddhist people are very connected with the temple because the culture, the language, the art, mostly yeah, they are connected with the temple. And because we had no religion in those days, and then after the war ended, but you know, people always expected to see monks, to see the temple rebuilt, and people could go to the temple for you know for healing, listening to the chanting, only to meet each other and sharing smiles. It's, it's already like ways of healing for them, you know, after the war. So I think in this part, uh, Buddhism has played a very important role for the life of uh, Cambodian people since the past until now. And plus, on that, education system was really hard. Uh, you know, the, the access to education was really very few for Cambodian in the past. So temple has played you know important role of uh, providing a space for like primary schools, mostly are uh, built in every monastery uh, in Cambodia in those days. Even I myself uh, was sent to live in the temple at the age of seven. And then uh, I got the, you know, to school only by staying at the temple. So un unfortunately for some girls who like not very close with the monks of the temple, they did not have the chance to go to school, you know. So, for me, I, uh, I I always feel grateful that uh, I um, come to, to like to a cross path with the teachings of the Buddha to live in the temple, so that I could go to school. I become who I am today because the, as a result of this, then I see that um, education is really the weapon to change the world, but not not anything else. It's the, the education. So. That's why I always believe that um, I really need to do something for you know my younger generation. I see that in the world nowadays we have lots of things complex in terms of uh, materialism. We actually not lack of anything, but education is very lack. It's very very shortage to our people. So each and every temple play its own role to. Uh, start, you know, uh, creating class, uh, giving, you know, like courses to uh, our people. And for me, uh, like as a vulnerable, we, we, we've been um, working so hard, you know, in what way that we can provide education to our young generation. And even some, some young generation, they uh, didn't even understand when going to the temple and we afraid to get close to the monk or want to talk to the monk. So we have put more effort on how to connect to the young generation and you know bridge the gap between the generation, the young and the old alike to come to the temple to learn. And luckily nowadays we have uh, social media which is uh, really helpful for us to connect to people around the world, you know, my uh, generation, no matter where they are in the world, like both on the ball, they are very powerful on social media, like Facebook. So many Cambodians really like to use Facebook. So it has like a, over 4 million followers on Facebook and almost a 1 million followers on Facebook, which reached out to, to many youths around the world. And I believe that uh, some people here in America have been following them on social media. So I think we also play a very important role because we can teach online. Uh, we use, uh, you know, like uh, 
Zoom, platform, uh, Microsoft Teams, and also the YouTube channel to uh, give the drama and to share the message of peace to other people. And even to start giving the literature class and teaching my language or teaching the, the drama in English is what I've been doing for the past five years. I keep uh, training people all around the world, especially for Cambodian people. They start to register to like uh, Buddhism in English to start learning both the, the drama terminology and also the teaching of the Buddha. How do you have the teaching of Buddhism to your follower? How do you oh, in okay. bridging the gap? I see. So uh, I, I mostly I'm, I'm invited to talk at school, uh, high school, usually the environment because a teenager has a uh, has some problem with their behavior. So they ask my okay, please come and help. <laughs> maybe it's the same thing to you and maybe. Uh, and uh, it usually so it was the talk. At the uh, the company, the company did come before they they never invite monks to talk, but now they invite monks to talk to the employees because they, they also have problems <laughs> fighting with with the uh, the the team or whatever, and also a government position, a government sector also invite monks to to talk. I think that is the way that you can uh, integrate the teaching of the Buddha to young people and also to the adults. And uh, I think the more effective way to reach out to the people, as Venerable Sophie already mentioned, that uh, we need to update ourselves to I mean, to social media. It's also important to interact with young people. I see the statistic in uh, Facebook and the people who watch my channel between maybe 16 to 35, mm -hmm. and that is my target. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is good to reach out to them. Yeah. So what are the challenges to people in Cambodia you know, face you and them? And when they come to you, when they come to approach you or invite you, what kind of Questions or concerns they have about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you share with us? What? So, so usually people come to the temple when when they are happy. Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. when when they are sad, also they come to the temple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they have problems with their life. They approach the monk, especially the mental problem. It's the I think that the monk plays a, a very important role, key role in healing the mental issue. When they have problems at home, uh, their spouse fighting, the financial problem, they also sometimes come to the monk. I don't, I would say, I, I'm, I'm not expert in finance. <laughs> <laughs> but they still come. Even sometimes people just change, want to change their career. They even come to the monk to ask for advice. And I, I cannot decide for you, okay? But I just say, if whatever you feel happy with, you can go into that direction. And they feel more confident in going to that direction because I'm meeting the man, talk to the man. And uh, yeah, I think that man play that role. And, and um, people usually uh, uh, go to the man when they play some man for issues. Uh, this morning I listened to one of the professors who mentioned that he produced a lot concerning the, the technology and science, but uh, they may not know the mechanism and how to solve the problem produced by the science and technology. So uh, I think the old and the young generation now search for consequences of technology and technology. So uh, I think 
they are loaded by pollution a lot. Then they buy the fossil fuels, and then they develop the potential. Now, at the monastic, this is the issue. How do monastic Buddhist monastic actually support social um, development initiatives? For example, already we are with COVID 19 in that time. Yeah. I think you can, can you share with us um, what, what type of initiatives do you have actually cultivated? Yeah. Yeah, or it can be anything. Anything. Just like institution, institution or something. This is how you have like get to you know the fundraising and an initiative that you can help. Uh, this is the right place as well. People that is about the kind of the journey to go on there. So, temple and money. Look up was um, okay. spend a lot of money on your wedding, but why not just share a small, not small amount of money to to hospital? And and they did so small amount of money. Okay, spend maybe ten thousand or more. Uh, I don't know how much money, but I asked I, I ask them, okay, do some good deed on your wedding day. Because we have a children hospital that in Cambodia provide free service to the children and they need a lot of fun, millions of dollars. Millions of children get get uh, support from the uh, the hospital. And and then I, I asked them, please share a little bit of your wedding fun for that uh, hospital that is good be on your wedding day. And uh, we are among has a, a somehow a special role in convincing people to share. <laughs> <laughs> and usually we ask them, okay, now there's some uh, group of poor people out there. Please, please come and help. Usually they, they, they reach people uh, support that initiative. initiative. And I, I usually do that with the uh, with come call. Okay. Again, come call. Yeah, thank you, Dustin. Workers. Workers. Yeah, yeah. Garment workers, sweatshops. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, they they help. But they have to be donated to share. And I think I think that is what we can do during the pandemic or, or after the pandemic. Yeah, even now, I think uh, like three of us, we've been helping with the uh, like, uncle hospital for the internet delivery. Yeah. We, we as the like the speaker fundraiser. So next month, we're going to be uh, conducted in what mode, like sometime. <laughs> so three of us are going to be like a speaker. Every year, we do that in June to arrange for fundraising is just to give a dollar of help so people can donate even a dollar. So to, this will have really supplies when the children in Cambodia that to get free uh, treatment in the project. So actually, um, we have a few more minutes. I've come to my last question here so I can open 
applause to the audience. We have full room of audience here and we have um, techies online as well. So as an individual, um, as a Buddhist monk, right, um, what challenges do you face in in your efforts in promoting teaching, promoting peace, promoting, promoting reconciliation today? Like what 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 is what is your challenge? Yeah, you can share when we make a challenge. <laughs> the, the, the most challenging thing is controlling myself. <laughs> So we can also understand you. It's it, it, it really hard. We went to almost everybody, <laughs> but it's hard to control yourself. That is the most difficult part for me. Uh, in another way, uh, it can be that question, right? Like in the working process, that we try to help people. Some teachings are very, like, very hard. It can be touching to some people because they don't like their work. For example, when teaching, uh, for example, when in the Buddhism, we call it quiet pizza. So we have the, the last one is not to take any help we can. So, so mostly I observe that when we talk about to refrain from taking any all of our instruction, people tend to move. Like that. <laughs> so, because you are mom, you don't say that. You, you don't bring that because you have a principle to practice. <laughs> but be lazy if you enjoy life, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's uh, one of like, the reaction um, I observed from, you know, my teaching. And on the other hand, um, there's a lot of uh, challenges in terms of uh, when we step into society that we want to share the teachings of the Buddha. Because in Cambodia, it's also, you know, political story that may involve. I don't want to touch base much on that, but if we talk about the challenge, sometimes people may view us in different angles, you know, but actually we are like a public figure. We stand on the Buddha's teaching, we stand on the Buddha side, but not on any political body. But some people may view us as uh, working for maybe uh, ruling party or the anti party, something like that, you know. So there's also a challenge for some of our monks, like these two venerable monks, sometimes we've been, you know, uh, criticized of standing for this or like that. So, but it's okay because uh, the government standards, what we really stand for is just to uh, try to promote education and to bring the work of peace to our society. Oh, you don't have any yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe language barrier also yeah. a challenge for me or other. It's very important to talk when you come back to in Kumar. <laughs> and then also, uh, <laughs> digital barrier, digital literacy. We cannot up, up to date. So, do you have a team to help you, support you, or you do everything by yourself? Yeah, yeah, we have a team. Maybe it's the I think now we are open the and answer. Do you have any questions? As an individual, um, monk as well, you can ask about. The teaching of Buddhism and um, history about Meru or even current um, social issues that is vulnerable on how we can do. Sorry, why why are you process the thought? I will go on my first. <laughs> Um, 
vice versa, chaos and suffering, how can one stay in that peace? First person is about at least how chaos, so sharing chaos, then how can we, yeah, how can we have even peace? How can we possibly be peace within ourselves? So that our surroundings are so chaotic. How can we, do you have any guidance? Especially, she mentioned about, um, I don't know, authoritarian authoritarianism. That we actually try to avoid in, in this talk, but yeah, it has been addressed. <laughs> uh, because if we want to make peace, just like we mentioned earlier, has to start from each individual, from the individual level. It's in the mind that everyone has no peace, it's not like how it's like to keep our peace. So we need to generate. Develop more the kind of passion. <laughs> Only when we ourselves play that role, you know, as setting as an example for others. I mean, everywhere in the world right now, you cannot say that completely at peace. There are always problems, maybe at the uh, community level, family, until the national level. There's always a problem. So they are always fighting, you know, big or small, but it is there. So what we really need to do is, you know, not just expecting momentary peace, but we need to, you know, understand the develop ourselves to that habit of living slowly time and time. When only when ourselves start to Feel that inner peace generates loving kindness to our surrounding. I think that in some way it may influence, the influence start to build, you know, vibration would be you know, more and more. So nowadays, many universities, they're teaching in English and use English textbook. <coughs> Even from younger generation, they see English better than English. Referring to English. Do you think this phenomenon will challenge the culture and national consciousness of Kenyan nation? That is a concern about the Ministry of Education or already uh like a policy that every school, public or private, need to teach uh student some in my do not 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 all or in English. So uh children can understand my culture, my literature and uh, my tradition. And then I, I use that talk to tell that it's good to let them go to some good my school in their secondary school or, or high school and let them learn more English later. Or maybe go to two together, English and my not just pure English. So I have a follow-up question. So as the role of the Islam, do you impart any teaching on Khmer traditional values with Islamic education? Okay. So now now the the Ministry of Education usually in white mom school. That is a important uh, for mom, it's good for mom to somehow integrate the teaching of the Buddha into the into school. And some some uh, private school, 
bring their students, bring their students to the temple and you <coughs> them meditation, Dharma talk, and all question and answer with those students, with, with the students. And also there's an opportunity for us to share the culture around the system. Wonderful, Architect. Question about the um, I feel uh, I'm from Cambodia and I I can um, you know understand much about the region, but um, I just wonder if um, if the like in the public school uh, there would be like the, in a teaching lesson, like in a teaching table in the school. In the class, like once a week, there should be a Buddhist teaching, like a special class, like art class, something like that. Is there any in the teaching system here in the public school? Do you think that would be uh, yeah, important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now the ministry encourages the school to invite them to not in, in class setting teaching, but uh, in the style activity, mm -hmm. so they together <laughs> learn some teaching. <clears throat> yeah, most of the school now they found uh, mm -hmm. uh, teaching in Buddhist community. Usually, the the Buddhist they have. We have another question from online. What is your vision to teach Buddhism for Khmer youth in Cambodia and youth around the world? Your vision for our vision. Yeah. And now they are distracted by social media technology. They lose the attention, they lose the connection. I remember last year I went to India, Bodhi Tree, where the Buddha got enlightenment. And they did not allow us to bring the phone to uh, to be at the media media and the uh, Bodhi Tree. And I said, that is good. You, you, you connect to the Buddha more than to connect to your phone. If you take your phone with you, you always take selfie, <laughs> take photo. But you didn't have time to connect to the Buddha. So I think that maybe help the youth to be a little bit, a little bit of happy. happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the vision that the Like in modern world where language is very important, like man, I think we need to be. That's why I uh, create a platform where I learn different things. They born here. online uh, classroom for them to get to learn Buddhism and also we have like a, every Friday talk show one week in a Buddhist person and another week in a person also speakers and uh, with that we also have a media classroom pitch on different Buddhist subjects like uh, psychology, mental health uh, body language, Sanskrit, uh, uh, 
tapi dan bahagian and then the I also write the book in both version that's my and English English one side my one side that someone got in the uh, yeah you got the book yeah. that's like the, the previous chapter about this in two version my one side English one side so uh, people who bought it you can read in English at the same time you can also learn Like, um, uh, I have a question just to follow up on the other question. Um, how would you say Buddhism has been maximized? I was born and raised in Cambodia, and I just went to four years ago. And as a, as a culture kid, I see myself, and there's a lot of like my women now are doing it, and I still see myself as a Buddhist. I'm not a and I learned some uh, Buddhist teaching, but I'm very confused, especially in the world of social media. And uh, how would you say, because the way that also, because of the way that you answer the question when asked of um, how do we teach Khmer Valley. So I'm very curious to see how much Buddhism has influenced Khmer Valley as a top method of editing teaching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, what do I say? I, 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 mean, uh, I take an example of a conflict resolution after the, the reform regime. Uh, the value of my people is to be able to find peace for them own country are willing to somehow unite uh, somehow to I would not say for, forget but maybe forgive and still remember <laughs> I mean the the, the genocide uh, the killing, all those starvation, and all those stuff, we still remember. But we forgive and we move on. The spirit of res resilience, that is, I think, it includes into the cult, promoting culture and also the Buddhist value where we, we, we need to move on. We need to, to go together, no matter how fragile your nation is, but stand up and forgive and, and move on. And don't forget. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's what I can say. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'll stand here. Um, I, uh, how does education play into Buddhism? I feel like Education has caused me much suffering. <laughs> I am getting an education so that I might find freedom and peace in my future, but I feel like it is causing me much suffering now. So uh, what is Buddhism? How do I handle that situation? Suffering bring to 100%. <laughs> <laughs> it's a taste of the fruit. Maybe that it kills us, but it actually fuels us, chew us to have us, you know? So, but we get skipping. <laughs> um, yeah, because actually, Buddhism is all about education, because the main purpose of the Buddha the main reason behind why he introduced the teaching is not about building faith or creating more faith or religious, you know, belief, something like that. It's all about finding wisdom. Because before the Buddha set forth to renounce the age and become a monk, he was wondering what's 
the meaning of life. How do I find that meaning of life? So he renounced the worldly life. He left the royal palace, went to the forest, spent six years struggling to find, to seek the truth of life, until finally he found that the meaning of life is actually freedom, in its freedom. So he see that the cause of our bondage is suffering, right? So the key to liberate ourselves is to remove our own, our cause of suffering, that is attachment, craving, thirst, thinking, so on. So, uh, the whole teachings of Buddhism is actually is about education because what the Buddha meant for that is about the, the mental education, mental development, as you can say. So, you see that nothing is free in this world. If there is no pain, there is no gain. So, you, you want to get, you want to be graduated, so you need to go through all the process. And then we, along the way, we need to experience some suffering, but there will be the you know, sweet fruit at the end. Just like when the Buddha, before he gained enlightenment, he also had to undergo a lot of agony, suffering, before he finally become enlightened. So it's all about education. Uh, Buddhism is not about the blind faith or just belief or any tradition. It's all about finding the meaning to your life and how to live your life happily, freely. Oh, question. Um, I feel like as I traveled in Southeast Asia, that I heard from a lot of local people that they felt like in order to develop that they had to westernize. Um, and I'm wondering um, what you guys think about how Cambodia can go through sustainable economic development um, without letting go of Cambodia's cultural values and cultural um, rich history, etc. Does the question make sense? So the question is how we develop economics without losing our values? Yeah, I feel like in a lot of places there's an expectation that in order to economically develop that we need to embrace Western values and expectations. I don't personally believe that, but I'm just wondering what you think Cambodia can do to continue to economically develop without losing vital Cambodian culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There will be more Cambodian students get more education, not just inside the country, but they will get out and learn and go back and not bring everything here. Sometimes it will not work. We will here and not work there. Integrate. But we, we, we have a lot of work to do to convince the use to, to get more education, to understand the, the world, not the Western, it's all, all, all way good, but we still need to learn from that. How we integrate Western value into our culture and without losing our identity. Education, suffering. <laughs> <laughs> 
have two more questions you want to ask the in person question but it's actually for me so as an activist myself mm -hmm. uh, i would like to understand more about the process so non-violent visible yes but in the in the moment of violence for example if there's a authoritarian and violent government um take violence for example <clears throat> in my case of my friend in Vienna so can we withstand non-violent principle I mean of somebody um putting gun on your head you know or what would you do at what someone in an activity Violence everywhere in the Buddhist country, not only in So I think that's why we hope to come back again and again, you know, back and forth to talk about education and practice, keep practicing. Uh, if we talk in that situation, I, I never experienced myself you know, in, in that situation. If there's somebody calling down the team. Uh, just imagine, I'm not going to react. I mean, you need to think it for me. That my eyes felt meditated after. And to actually talk something that, that can, you know, bring the message to the mind that, that this is not Buddhist. I shouldn't react physically or using violence again, violence. That's not the way. And also, to return hate to the patient because it's not something. So, only being done. I actually had a question along with yours. Um, I've been I've been practicing Buddhism since twenty two thousand nine, and learned about ah his ahimsa specifically in two thousand twelve and practicing ahimsa since then. And I, that was a really good question. I wanted to ask you in situations where, like if my friend is being attacked by a dog, I don't want to hurt this dog, but it's hurting my friend. What do I do? <laughs> I, I think don't... the dog. <laughs> 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 the dog. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just use some stick. <laughs> okay. Question. Like, um, all of us really like don't know what to make us happy, and what is to be mindfulness, and how to be mindfulness, and um, you know, like you're so angry, and how to control yourself, and like. Stop being so mad to other people or being upset to other people. Like how to control yourself in order to to calm yourself to be more happy. Um, so, so first step, I think, to, to be aware that you are angry, mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe take a deep breath. Help with some stress. Uh, and if if that's the thing that you angry, maybe you can go away a little bit. Uh, and it, and at least we still have to to analyze the situation. Uh, 
I don't think the we don't have a quick remedy for controlling the cell, but it's a long process. Very long, little by little. And specifically to hate or anger, the Buddha advised us to develop meta bhavana, and that in English, loving kindness meditation, loving kindness cultivation. And the very first step to, to develop loving kindness is to love yourself first. So the mantra of developing loving kindness is, may I be well and happy, may I be free from suffering, may I be free from hatred. So that is a, a wish, a, a, a good wish for yourself. May I be well and happy, may I be free from suffering, may I be not uh, dislike or hate anybody. And then continue to expand that love to not the one you dislike, because you cannot immediately like the person you don't like. So you develop the, the loving kind of towards what you respect the most. May my mom, may my dad be well and happy. May my teacher be well and happy, something like that. And then you ex expand that love to your families, to your close friends, and to the normal people. So, so you upgrade that love step by step, step by step, step by step. So the, your mind is protected by many layers of love. And then the mind is is good, it, but you cannot immediately control the anger with one thought or one wisdom or one mantra. Okay, psh, you are deep now. I give you thought to learn something. Uh, the thing is a good question that a lot of people have asked that before, like especially in a situation when we are so mad at somebody, how do we control our ability to control ourselves, not to react? To them, you know. So the base, the base reaction is actually not to react. It's based still. If you react, you're gonna make more problem. But, but, but. So, because the teaching of Buddhism, you know, it needs practice, it needs time for mind to settle down to to have a habit of calming and mindful. Sometimes we may be mindful only when the situation is like favorable, but in the time when things are chaotic outside there, yeah, we tend to lose mindfulness because we've been affected internally as well. So what we what do we do? In this practice on a daily basis, that's why meditation should be practiced everywhere at any time, at any, any moment, on a daily basis. At any activity, we should be mindful so that we gain that habit of not reacting because then it's uh, in the Buddhist way of um, solving our anger is to first, like the noble hand said, to be <clears throat> aware that there is anger, right? It's like, there is anger, there is anger. Anger is, but don't stick to that idea. Oh, this is my anger. And there is somebody who caught me to be angry, so you don't relate yourself to others, and you don't relate like pointing to that person or this person who made me angry. So at the at the moment, you just stand still without any reaction whatsoever, seeing anger that arises in your mind, anger and anger, and then automatically it just vanishing go away. As time goes by, it needs time and it needs patience. Like, so just to be mindful whenever there is anger happening, just be mindful anger. Even when hearing the sound, somebody is blaming you. Sound is sound. You don't view it as somebody's sound that is hurting me. So then you will relate to problems. So you just don't connect yourself to that, you know? Just like your door is closed so that no any bad thing can come, can come in. So here is the important role of the mindfulness. Mindfulness plays an important role because it needs to alert you that, oh, 
there is something bad is happening right now. So you need to close your door and welcome guests. We will not allow it. You just close your door. You only open the door for the invited guests. You know, do things, smile, peace and love. So uh, in short, the best reaction is not to react. Actually, in terms of sound, we almost come to sound, but um, we have one burning question from the audience. Can you can you briefly? Okay. Um, so <clears throat> just wondering about um the teaching of Buddhism about seeing something wrong but not addressing it, not saying it, but as a bystander, is there, is there any teaching in Buddhism related to that? And if you're a bystander, like what does the peaceful in Buddhism say about being a bystander? Is it okay to be a bystander in Buddhism? <laughs> Back in the time, uh, there was conflict between two nations, his mother's nation and his father's nation. Out of the water in the river, surface, they are fighting because of the water. The Buddha went to in the middle of the war, but they are not fighting yet, but they are preparing to fight. And as he is the son of both kingdom, so both uh, group also the commander and king listened to him, and he advised to to again so uh, the <laughs> drop the gun. <laughs> Hey, the Dharma. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teach them the consequences of war. The war will, will become blood. And he just wait until the ready to come because you uh, for the again. A lot of teaching there. And you may see the Buddha standing like that. As one uh, one of the posture of the Buddha, did that would would give prevent war. Prevent war. Yeah. Uh, I think that it 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 does have our own role in sharing, uh, helping, uh, the people to reconciliate, to have dialogue, to bring them together. That is the role. I think without without dialogue, maybe the war in Cambodia never end. All people come and talk. If you if you don't have willingness to, to sit and talk, the war never end. That's a commentary. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, I think we come to the end of the session. We had a fruitful discussion today. A lot of wisdom to take away from it. If you want to learn more about Buddhism, please uh, follow their social media account, YouTube, <laughs> TikTok, website, subscribe for, for them to have more followers. Um,
So also help us with the sign in sheet so we can keep this activity going. You have the sign in sheet over there. Um, so thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you.